Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Another day at the office, another day of misinformation spread about traditional Catholics by online Catholic podcasters. Um, I was just notified of this article, or sorry, podcast, via Twitter, and it is by a gentleman named, I guess his name is Vince Segal. I've never heard of him, but uh, a fella on Twitter, tw a fella on Twitter, what am I, from New Orleans? Goodness gracious. You'd think I wasn't a professional uh, narrator if I can't even speak. A fellow on Twitter shared his show, and uh, I like this guy on Twitter, this uh, fella, so I thought I'd check it out. And I listened to it for, I don't know, four or five minutes, and a few minutes in, I find, well, a lie about me. Um, and this person is putting himself forward, this Vince fella, as some sort of, I don't know, middle ground, look at me, I'm not a rad, radical, I think he used the term radical far-right traditionalist. I like to know what that is, I, uh, radical far-right, hmm. I like to read the Catechism of the Council of Trent to my children, I like to read my children the Chronicles of Narnia, I like Archbishop Lefebvre, and I attend the traditional Latin Mass, I guess that makes me a far-right traditional Catholic, so I guess every Catholic before 1970 was a far-right traditional Catholic. Far-right traditional Catholic. What an ominous sound that is, isn't it? In any case, um, let's just listen for half a second here to what he said about me, and then we're going to break this down. So here you're going to hear him kind of get to the meat of it. This is about a minute, a ten or ten and a half of his show. In fairness to Pope Francis, that from day one he has been attacked over and over and over again, ruthlessly attacked by far-right radical traditionalist laymen okay um taylor marshall is one of them john henry weston is another one of them um kennedy hall amazing from day one he's been ruthlessly attacked by far-right traditional catholic laymen let's do a little bit of uh math here pope francis became pope in 2013 I started my podcast in 2022. How many years passed since the uh, beginning of Pope Francis's papacy and the year 2022? Nine years? I do help homeschool my children. I don't have a degree in actuarial, actuarial sciences. I'm not sure if I can be trusted as a mathematical authority, but I do think that that is nine years. There's a big difference between nine years and day one. And ruthlessly attacked. I'm just going to look at my YouTube here. I'm looking at the back end of my YouTube, and I'm going to look at my last, I don't know what it is, my last uh, 30 podcasts. Okay. I did one on the dark side of Catholic YouTube and podcasting, not about the Pope. I did a podcast explaining what had happened to uh, Bishop Strickland. I did one on the trans baptism thing, where I basically just went through a theological critique of whether or not it technically counted as heresy, and I didn't say Pope Francis was the Antichrist or anything like that. I did one called Good News, Liberal Priests Are Going Away. Okay. I did one uh, on the Orthodox, an Orthodox bishop. He was blasting the German Conference of Bishops. I did one on the dangers of the charismatic renewal. I did one on God's victory, why you shouldn't take the black pill, why you should still remain hopeful. I did one with Brian Holdsworth on Novus Ordo Refugees. Journey to Catholic Tradition, where I don't even think we talked about Pope Francis at all. Then I did a couple podcasts on Martin Luther, which I know Pope Francis defends, so maybe that's why I'm attacking Pope Francis by going after Luther. I did an interview with Bishop Schneider on his new catechism, where we didn't talk about the Pope at all. I did an, uh, an episode on the link between the charismatic renewal and the synod and synodality. I did an episode on Halloween and the occult. Is it a Catholic holiday, etc., with my friend Charles Franny, who's a Catholic author. I don't think we talked about the Pope at all there. I did one on a traditional Catholic priest named Father Hector Bulduck with a, a friend of mine, Mr. Tom Summers, just talking about his biography he had written. I did a podcast on the um, a Catholic nun who had tackled an environmentalist, which was kind of this viral clip that went around. I thought it was kind of funny. I did one on the Synod on Synodality. Is it the result of Vatican II? And I said, it's meant to control you. And in that, I actually said, you shouldn't pay too much attention to the Synod because it's just meant to make you upset. Um, and he goes on in his show to actually claim that people like me are just doing clickbait to make people upset when I literally said the opposite. Anyway, 
I put up a free recording of the first chapter of the Gospel of John, probably out of my Pope Francis hatred. I did an, an episode with Father Maudsley on the biblical prophecy of the conversion of the Jews. I talked about Israel and Palestine, if it's the beginning of the end times, and how we're not supposed to worry about things like that because of Scripture. Again, must have been me attacking the Pope. I did one on Malachi Martin and the Jesuits, which was just a chat about Malachi Martin. I guess that means I'm attacking the Pope. I did one on the Canadian residential schools with a historian. Again, must have been some sort of uh, attack on the Pope. I did one uh, on Father Altman, Pope Francis, and the traditional Catholic Father Wound, where I said, I understand why people go after Pope Francis and kind of think he's not the Pope, but I don't take that position. Must have been because I'm attacking the Pope. I did one on traditional Catholicism and being a Pharisee and the sort of theology of the Sunday obligation. I don't think I mentioned Pope Francis once. I did one on Bishop Schneider said, no one can say Pope Francis is not the Pope. And I reported on that and gave my opinion. Must have been part of my Catholic, uh, radical, far-right, traditional Catholic hatred of the Pope. I did one with an author, a friend of mine, uh, Stephen Cox, on St. Alphonsus and holiness. I guess that means I hate the Pope and I'm attacking him. I did one with a nun on the incorruptible uh, body, the in incorruptible saint in the making. I guess she's already a saint. You know what I'm saying? She hasn't been canonized. Of Sister uh, Wilhelmina. Again, must have been traditional Catholic uh, Pope hatred. I did one on Trudeau's empty graves. The truth about the mass graves. This was, again, because I hate the Pope, according to this gentleman. And I did one on uh, when it was released that Pope Francis was going to get Bishop Strickland to resign. That was in September. We can go back even further. Uh, I talked about Father Altman, Saint of a Contest, and how the children are suffering. Uh, I did one on what is true Christian freedom, which was really just me talking about what the church has taught about that. I talked about... Um, well, here's one where I did say Pope Francis did talk about uh, sort of a modernist doctrine with the Jesuits because that just happened. So, And then I actually used um, Pope Pius X to show that. I talked about the World Youth Day where uh, the World Youth Day priest got caught okaying sodomy. I guess that's also because I hate the Pope. I did an episode with a traditional Catholic priest, Father McGilvery, on Pashendi, the teaching of modernism. Uh, I guess I did that because I hate Pope Francis. I talked about uh, Vatican II. Is it infallible? Using a theological treatise. It was about an hour long, very in-depth. I guess that's because I hate Pope Francis. I did one on Pope St. Pius X shows why you might be a modernist, where I just simply went over Lamentabili Sane, which was his syllabus of errors. I did an interview with the District Superior of Canada, Father David Sherry, on the Society of St. Pius X, the, ac the accusations of schism, abuse, obedience, the vaccine, and more. Uh, I don't even think we talked about Pope Francis at all in that article, in interview. I talked about that World Youth Day DJ priest making a mockery of Catholicism, which was true. I did another one called Escape the Negative Feedback Loop, Discover Truth, Goodness, and Beauty, where I actually encouraged people to do things like discover truth, goodness, and beauty, which must have been because I hate Pope Francis. I did one with a associate of Father Ripperger on how to basically fight Satan in your own life. Again, must have been because of my radical, traditional Catholic far-right hatred of Pope Francis. I did one on Bishop Schneider talking about Medjugorje. Must have been because I hate Pope Francis. Uh, one of them, I just simply read an article written by my friend Tim Flanders about the idea of the catacomb and the death of Pope Benedict. Must have been because I hate Pope Francis. I did one on um, Islam with a friend of mine, Lloyd de Jong, uh, about uh, Islam. And are the Muslims really the sons of Abraham? Blah, 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 blah. I did another one called should you leave the Catholic Church because of Pope Francis and the LGBT Synod? Wherein I said, no, you shouldn't. And let's put some context on it. Must be because I hate the Pope. Anyway, I could keep going further back. I haven't even looked at the live ones that I did. One was on Charles Darwin. Another one was on Charles Darwin. One was on the Abu Dhabi house, which I guess if I don't like that, does that make me a far right radical traditional Catholic who hates the Pope? I did another one on the ties between Islam and Freemasonry with my friend Lloyd. Uh, I did one uh, talking about um, the occult with this author, Charles Frawney. And there you go. So, yeah, there's definitely some episodes where I've talked critically about Pope Francis. But out of those 50 or so, there's like three or four episodes. But I guess that means that it's a constant barrage for me quote-unquote attacking the Pope, and apparently, because I started this podcast in 2022, that means I've been doing it since day one. 
There's another thing that he says. I'm going to play that for you in a second here. And I want you to listen to this, and we're going to have a little laugh about it together. So here's the money line. Check it out. Seems like to me, okay? And, and I will say this. I look into how much money these people actually make, and they make a lot of money. And... Ha. He looked into how much money these people make. Again, myself, and they make a lot of money. Well, Vince, I would like you to tell me where that money is. I would love to have some of that money. You can keep it. You can keep some of it because you know where it is because you've looked into it. I would really like you to tell me where I can get a portion of that money, that lot of money that I make uh, because maybe I've misplaced it. Maybe I got this huge check from the far right, radical, traditional Catholic, whatever, and I just forgot to deposit it. And maybe you found it. I mean, that'd be great if you could tell me where that is. What is hilarious about this? <laughs> I did a, a podcast a couple days ago talking about there is actually a massive monetary incentive within Catholic podcasting, but it's not with traditionalists. Uh, you want to know who makes a lot of money doing Catholic apologetics and, and podcasting? Look to the organizations that have massive multi-million dollar year budgets and hire people to be full-time apologists. Uh, and then they also get to go on national speaking tours where they're getting three to $5,000 a talk. Uh, and they have marketing teams behind their podcast where they get to keep the monetization. Those men are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year being Catholic apologists. I don't make that much money. I wish I did. I just simply don't. And Vince, if you know where that money is, I, I really hope you could help me find it because because I could use some. I've got six children. Well, my sixth child will be born in 32 days as the C-section for my wife. Pray for her. And I could use a little baby bonus. Um, so if you're listening to this and you'd like to be a subscriber uh, to help me out, because even though I do make tons of money, because Vince has looked into it and uh, he didn't talk to me. He doesn't know me. I've never met him before. I didn't know he existed until 25 minutes ago, but he does know I make tons of money. Uh, so he does have some sort of, perhaps he has some sort of charismatic gift. I don't know, maybe he's been to Medjugorje and he's got the gift of prophecy or something like that. And he knows that I make tons of money. So Vince, buddy, you can click the link in the description to this video and I'll make sure you get this video. Um, and you can send me an email. My contact is there. And then you can tell me, maybe you can send me a treasure map and, uh, you know, maybe just write it. You know, I'm not very smart. I'm not as smart as you because I'm not able to find out who makes tons of money without talking to them. I don't have that special gift. So if you could put it in layman's terms, maybe you can draw some pictures on it. Maybe you could put some arrows so I can follow that treasure map. Maybe you could tell me where I could get a shovel so I could dig that chest of gold out of the ground. I'd love that. But, you know, even though I'm, a, I'm, I'm blackout loaded from all this rad trad traditional Catholic money that I make, which again, I've never seen, but I, apparently I have it somewhere. Maybe Vince, you can come by. If you email me, I'll give you my address. You can get on a plane if you're in the States, come to Canada, and you can help me find where I've misplaced it. Um, but if you do want to add to that huge pile of money that I'm sitting on, as I sit here in my unfinished basement, which is my office, because that's what really, really rich, radical, traditional Catholic far right Pope attacking podcasters who out of 50 podcasts do two or three that are critical of the Pope. Those men, because they're so rich, they sit in leaky basements on, um, on their uh, card table chairs for their desk and record podcasts on their iPhones. That's what the rich podcasters do. And that's that's me. You got me. I'm, I'm, I'm caught. You caught me red-handed with your special gift of prophecy. And anyway, you could uh, perhaps send me some information. We could find that money together. I'll even give you a finder's fee, which you've already found it because you know it exists because of your special gift of prophecy. So I guess it's not really a finder's fee. It's more of a Maybe I'll just give it all to you because I already have so much money because of all the money that I make from being a radical far-right traditional Catholic podcaster who attacks the Pope since day one when I started in 2022, which was nine years after Pope Francis's pontificate. You can help me find that money, uh, or I guess you can tell me where it already is. Maybe you can buy locate because you do have the gift of prophecy. You are able to find out how much money people have in their bank account and where it comes from, which you've said on the podcast. So I know you're not lying. And maybe you can buy locate with your special spiritual gifts and you can find a way to help me find that money. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to add to these massive piles of gold that I'm sitting on, 
you can uh, click the link in the description. You can donate one time. Uh, I'm sorry. I know that I'm a massive far right traditional Catholic podcaster. I am not a nonprofit. Uh, I'm not a nonprofit because I'm so greedy. I like to keep all the money to myself, right? So you can you can donate to me, maybe five bucks, whatever you want. Uh, or you can click the link in the description for my Substack, which I've just launched, where you can support me that way. And I will be turning on YouTube memberships as well to add to my huge pile of traditional Catholic far-right Pope attacking money. And you can help me that way. There's more to this podcast, but listen, Vince, I've never met you. You can email me if you want to say sorry for basically just spreading lies about me, which, um, which um, but I know they're not lies because I know that you have the gift of prophecy and I know you looked into this. Um, and I know you're really good at math. So you know that 2022 is the same thing as 2013, which is day one. And I know you looked at my channel and saw the, you know, probably less than 10% or so of podcasts where I attack quote unquote Pope Francis, unless you think calling out modernism is attacking the Pope. Well, then I guess guilty as charged. I guess everyone who believes the catechism of the council of Trent is attacking the Pope. Give me a ring, Vince. Let me know where I can find this money. And, uh, and, and, and tell me, you know, I, I think I, I lost all those podcasts I did in 2013 attacking the Pope. Maybe you can help me find one. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said it before. These people have no love for traditionalists. They masquerade as these perfect golden mean, look at me. I'm not a leftist. I'm not a far right traditional Catholic. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm Goldilocks. I'm right in the middle. I'm just warm enough. I'm not too hot. I'm not too cold. My bed's not too lumpy. It's not too hard. I'm just right. I'm not too tall. I'm not too short. I'm just the really good, squeaky clean, middle of the road Catholic. And I'm not an extremist like those. These people are liars. This man is a liar. Uh, and he's calumniating my name and others, which is nothing new, but I just came across my desk. So I thought I'd do a, thought I'd do a little quick show about it. Anyway, as always, let me know what you think in the comments and please pray that I get the gift of prophecy and by location so I can go find that pile of gold that Vince knows that I have, which I just can't seem to find. <laughs>